Hi guys, this is Ranjit and in this uh, video, I'm going to talk about the OnePlus uh, 9 variant, specifically the Indian variant that is sold in India. I think so you guys need to know this before you're buying the OnePlus 9 variant. And I don't think so, it's a very good uh, variant and I'll talk about it why. And I've been actually using the OnePlus 9 uh, Pro, uh, so I'll also be posting a video about this very soon, so stay tuned to the channel. So let's uh, first talk about the OnePlus uh, 9. Uh, and as you can see, I have my laptop, so made some notes. And it's sold in India for, for that pricing of about 49,990, about 50,000. And generally with the most of the OnePlus devices, I'm not talking about the Pro lineup, even the regular one, we always used to have optical image stabilization in the camera. But that is actually missing on the OnePlus 9. And I think so, that will give the camera because even with this OnePlus 9 Pro, which has optical image stabilization, supposed to be better camera, the camera is okay, not spectacular as they are hyping with the Hasselblad branding. So I miss the fact that now we are not getting that optical image stabilization on the OnePlus 9. In fact, the OnePlus 9R, that is for 40,000, has optical image stabilization. So that is something you have to note. But this next thing that really bugs me, guys. And uh, let me actually show you this screenshot. This first screenshot is from the international variant. And guys, if you notice that arrow, there it says that the OnePlus 9 that is sold in the international market is having 15 watt wireless charging. So that's actually nice. But look at this screenshot. This is the variant that is being sold in India officially. That wireless charging thing is simply missing. And the Indian variant that is being sold in India, the OnePlus 9, simply does not have any support for wireless charging. And guys, I checked it with uh, some uh, reviewers who have got the unit of the OnePlus 9 in India. And yes, they have confirmed to me that it does not have wireless charging. So I feel here, we as Indians are getting a second class treatment. I don't uh, like it. You have one variant of the smartphone having a specific feature, but in the Indian variant, you have just silently removed wireless charging. Why don't you think we as Indians deserve that? So I don't know about you, but I feel that indirectly OnePlus is just showing us the middle finger and they can say, okay, it's for India, we'll just remove some features and that's okay. So you guys let me know, is that okay or not? The variant of the OnePlus 9 sold in India simply does not have any wireless charging. Okay, next let's uh, talk about the 5G bands and many of you actually know about this. So let me talk about that. And again, this is the international variant that Arrow, as you can see, it has a lot of 5G bands. In fact, about 12 or 13 5G bands are actually supported. But again, if you look at the second screenshot, this is for the Indian variant. And this is applicable to both the OnePlus 9 Pro as well as the OnePlus 9. It has just two 5G bands, as you can see, denoted with that arrow. So I don't like the fact uh, that uh, the Indian variant is just having two 5G band support. And some of you might argue, we don't have 5G in India. Yes, we don't have 5G now in India, but next year sometime it should come out in India. And having these limited bands can be an issue. I have told uh, hundreds of times about that. And I'll talk about the 5G part also. And uh, But other vendors, if you look at it, for example, if I talk about the Snapdragon 888, this is the Asus ROG Phone 5. This has almost all the 5G bands that are supported uh, and uh, even um, uh, the what is this this is the Samsung Galaxy S20 FE uh, I checked with Samsung India this supports nine bands of uh, 5G the iPhone 12 that is sold in India supports all bands of sub 6 gigahertz 5G even uh, if you talk about some of the budget oriented uh, smartphones that are sold in India having the 5G Monkier uh, for example the Narzo 30 Pro that is for just 17,000 I think so it has four or five bands of 5G even the Oppo F19 uh, Pro Plus has about four or five bands of 5G. So I don't get it, uh, get the point of having just two 5G bands for the OnePlus 9 and the OnePlus 9 Pro. These are not cheap smartphones, budget-oriented smartphones. When I, when you are selling a smartphone above 40, 45, 50,000, I feel they should support 5G band. And now some of you might argue okay they might be able to enable the 5g bands or why are they limiting the 5g band that's the big question because we know that the snapdragon 888 or even the 865 has a lot of support for 5g and many of the other smartphones are actually supporting that 5g so why do brands do this some same chipset 
but some brands have just one or two bands of 5G, whereas other might have nine or 10 bands of 5G. And it all comes down to the licensing. For example, if we talk about the Snapdragon 888, it has all support, uh, full support for 5G for every brand out there, every band out there. Uh, but the thing is that, let's say if you're buying that Snapdragon 888, like it has support for all the 5G bands like the ROG Phone 5, uh, the Qualcomm might charge you, let's say, hypothetical figure of $100. But you, you say to Qualcomm, oh, we don't want so many bands of 5G, we just want one or two, or we don't want this feature, that feature. Then uh, Qualcomm might reduce the price of the chip to about, let's say, hypothetical $85. So by doing that, brands actually save uh, some money in licensing costs. That's why you find some, uh, what do you say, smartphones having all bands of 5G, whereas some simply don't have it. It all comes down to the licensing terms. So I feel uh, it's okay for a budget-oriented uh, device. They are doing that cost getting four or five bands. Even budget brands are giving four or five bands. But when you're charging this sort of premium, you should support all bands of 5G. And some of you might argue, and I've seen this argument with some young bloggers, influencers, or trying to defend OnePlus, uh, even though they are just giving two bands of 5G for this OnePlus 9 on the OnePlus 9 Pro, they say that OnePlus might enable these 5G bands later on with the software update. Technically, yes, they can do it, but it all depends on the licensing terms. If they have brought this, uh, bought these chips from, what say, Qualcomm, and they have just paid the license for a specific bands, then Qualcomm will say, no, you cannot enable it. Or they might have to pay uh, future sums uh, to Qualcomm on a later date. Again, it all depends on the licensing terms. That's why generally uh, we find that many of the smartphones, uh, except OnePlus, if you notice many of the smartphones, all 5G phones that are sold in India have at least four or five bands of 5G. Many of them have eight, 10 bands of 5G because that's how it works. And uh, I've been in this industry for such a long time. I've been running this YouTube channel for the last 10 years. Prior to that also for five years, I used to do tech blogging. And in the last 15 years, there is one thing that I've understood while reviewing a product is, you review a product based on what functionality it has today. You don't try to speculate about a product or recommend a product based on some future hypothetical update. Because you simply do not know you will get that update or not. So people who are trying to bloggers, young influencers, etc., who are trying to defend the OnePlus 9 and the 9 Pro, just having two bands of 5G, just ask them tomorrow, next year, 5G when it comes to India. And uh, because it has just two bands of 5G, the 5G does not work. Will they, this blogger or whatever who's defending it, refund that money? There, are, there is a chance that OnePlus might enable it, but there is a very high chance that OnePlus might simply not update those 5G bands because officially, if you go to their website, only officially right now, two bands of 5G are supported and you bought the device uh, with that. So I hope this clears the uh, confusion about the OnePlus 9 variant that is sold in India. And I frankly feel uh, the OnePlus 9 at 50,000 with these compromises, no OIS, and we are getting a, what do you say, degraded version of the OnePlus 9 without the wireless charging and the 5G band simply does not make that much sense. And again, one thing I completely forgot to mention is that the OnePlus 9, the actual frame, almost on all OnePlus was metallic aluminum earlier. But now on the OnePlus 9, the actual frame is made up of uh, fiber and plastic. So again, that is also something you got to know. So I feel if you like the OnePlus, I would not recommend the OnePlus 9 Indian variant for the obvious reasons that I've mentioned. And I feel the OnePlus 9R makes a lot more sense, guys. But again, what do you guys feel about this? What do you feel about the OnePlus 9 variant that is being sold in India? I would say it's a compromised variant that OnePlus is selling in India. And do you think OnePlus should do that or not? If you agree with me, hit that like button. And if you don't agree, hit that dislike button. But if you feel uh, we are not getting the right version of the OnePlus 9 in India, cutting down on features like wireless charging, etc. I would love that you share this video with your friends on Twitter, WhatsApp, etc. So that People who are going to buy the OnePlus 9, the Indian variant in India, know the exact reality. I don't mind people buy this variant, but they should know what they are actually getting. So guys, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. And if you guys are still not subscribed to my YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button. The OnePlus 9 Pro review is coming out very soon. So guys, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Take care and I will catch you later.